Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to takesbyfans.com slash watch. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered in multiple ways. All righty, today's a big old Friday, folks, and we got to make our official Super Wild Card Weekend picks. That is kicking off tomorrow, folks. We have endured 18 fantastic magnificent weeks in the NFL and now it's time for the good stuff everything has led to the next following weeks here folks all this is what you play for to get into the playoffs yeah all right you know all these kind of MVP worthy performances in the regular season Tom Brady slinging the ball Aaron Rodgers slinging the ball Joe Burrow slinging the ball Jonathan Taylor trying to run the ball to the playoffs but I'm Unfortunately, you need somebody that can sling it as well. And we know Carson Wentz cannot sling the ball. So everything has led to this moment right here, the start of the playoffs. And we're about to see a, see which teams are the real deal, which team ha- were just kind of disguised as pretenders the entire season. We're going to find that all out this weekend. So we got to make our official picks. We will be picking every single game this week. Uh, we do have, you know, sections. We've got a lock section. we still got a 99% guarantees. But now we also have a little bit of a 98% guarantee. And we're going to have to watch some film to really figure out this last bet. There's one that I'm just either way. I've been flip-flopping. It's the toughest game to call for the weekend. And maybe we just have to take the points. So we'll talk all that through once we get to that matchup. And then we will uh, talk through the MVP. Um, I think we're a little late. Are we late on the MVP? I don't understand why no sports book has those odds up anymore. Is it too late? Did we miss our moment to officially officially bet on the MVP? Um, I thought they would have kept it open up until voting, but I guess they just kept it up until the end of the regular season. Because uh, that's when we kind of wanted to relook at it on Monday after week 18, but no game. So I guess we missed the bet aspect, but we can still talk about it because we have not talked about MVP really at all this season because nobody was really kind of making themselves a huge front runner uh, midway, three quarters of the way through the season. So uh, we were just enjoying all the greatness that was going on. But now we can talk about MVP on the show. Uh, And once again, a lot of debate here on who the MVP should be. And once again, once again, it was, you know, uh, I would say probably about like weeks 9, 10, 11, everybody was like Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, or everybody was like Tom. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and I agree, Tom Brady, yes, and then it flipped like overnight to Aaron Rodgers for some weird reason, so we'll talk all that through, folks, and we'll see, is there any merit with Aaron Rodgers winning MVP, is it really, should it be Tom Brady, signed, sealed, delivered already, so we'll talk all that through, and then as y'all know, we gotta do our NBA Daily 10, folks, so let's start with that. Here we go. Getting 10 minutes on the clock here. Next 10 minutes of uninterrupted basketball talk of what just happened yesterday in the NBA. So here we go. 10 minutes on the clock and the 10 minutes start right now. Alrighty. Just a handful of games on in the NBA last night. And what was our goal? What was our goal last night to get back on track? We have just been missing great value over the like the last two weeks. I have been out of my element, folks. I have been letting y'all down. So what did we do last night? We went to get back to the basics back to the basics and we hit baby we're back we're back if cam newton could say i'm back i'm back baby yes sir free money is back folks so you might want to you know pay attention over for the next you know 15 minutes all right so here we go we had two bets going in we'll talk about it when we reach those matchups so let's start with the first matchup that we bet on warriors at the bucks and f- Folks, folks, we had to swallow two here. <laughs> Bucks minus two. And I think at tip off it was Bucks minus one. The Bucks had like a 40 point lead going in 40 point lead going into halftime, folks. Bango bango. We're back. Bucks minus two. They win by 19. No problem. Once again, this Warriors team needs Draymond Green on the floor. He is their enforcer. He is their beef. He is a little bit of the heart of this team. 
Yes, Clay Thompson's back, but once again, he's playing limited minutes. Like we said, only 20 minutes. That's what we're expecting. So we knew it wasn't any great value betting on the Warriors last night. And, you know, our thought process was 1 trillion percent correct, folks. Like, they were down 40 points. Uh, let me get the official number right here. Uh, the Warriors put up 38 points in the first half. 38 points. They were down 47 to 38. 38 to 47 74 def 77 Jesus Louise they were down 77 to 38 at halftime folks okay let's start here with the bucks quickly Giannis doing his thing, 30 points, 11 assists, 12 rebounds, Jeez Louise, Bobby Portis, 20.7 rebounds, Chris Middleton, 23.7 assists, 5 rebounds, and Grayson Allen a little bit back as well, and we absolutely love that, 15 points on 3 of 7 from the 3, absolutely fantastic, so the little, little bit of, of the big 4 here for the Bucks, truly getting it done last night, uh, always reliable. And then for the Warriors, Steph Curry, lackluster night. Steph Curry's been going through this stretch ever since Klay Thompson's been back. And I know it's only been two games, but man, oh man, Steph Curry, only 12 points, two of six from the three, 36% on 11 shots. Him only taking 11 shots is just um, out of ordinary as well. I mean, he takes 11 threes a game. He took 11 shots just in totality. Kevon Looney still can't get it done at the five, seven points, seven rebounds. Um, off the bench, Jonathan Kaminga, 15 points, seven rebounds, pretty solid. Klay Thompson in his 20 minutes 11 points on two of seven from the three not getting it done so Warriors they're still a good team we're not saying that this is a bad team they just are in a little bit of a funk with the injuries Clay Thompson trying to get back Jordan Poole trying to get acclimated down to the bench since he's been in the starting lineup the entire season so Warriors you got to stay away from betting them yes they've got the big name they've got the cloud all that but they are not good bets at the current moment we proved that last night Bucks minus two hits bingo bango they win 118 to 99 all right, next game up here, which was the other game that we bet on last night. Timberwolves at the Grizzlies. We had Grizzlies minus four, and they take care of business. They win by eight, 116 to 108 uh, over the Timberwolves. And why we felt so confident, confident betting on this game. Grizzlies team last night was because of John Morant for the Grizzlies and just the overall unable to get it done in the stretch down the stretch in the fourth quarter when the game is close they can't really close it out this Timberwolves team is not ready to kind of take that next step of closing out games and beating really really good teams and that's exactly what we saw last night game tied with about two and a half minutes left and the Grizzlies just pull away big shots fouls all that and the Timberwolves just could not clutch it up at the end so the Grizzlies win by eight to cover the four bingo bango our two-teamer last night bingo bango folks we're back but here we go for the Grizzlies last night John Morant 16 points nine assists eight rebounds fantastic he wasn't efficient last night 0 of 7 from the three and 31 percent shooting on 16 shots but still a plus five on the floor still getting it done shout out big time to John Morant Desmond Bain 21 points four steals two assists three rebounds and Jaron Jackson Jr. playing the five in uh, in lieu of Steven Adams who's been out 20 points five rebounds a plus six on the floor yes 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 and then the bench folks John Concher 15 points 17 rebounds and Brandon Clark 14 points and eight rebounds man oh man this Grizzlies team folks they are so gosh dang good they are so gosh dang deep John Morant yes sir MVP 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 <clears throat> All right, and then the Timberwolves here, the big three. They got it done. D'Angelo Russell, 29 points, six assists. Carl Anthony Towns, 25 points, nine rebounds. Anthony Edwards, 30 points, four assists. But then the other fourth leading scorer was Jared Vanderbilt, eight points. Patrick Beverly, three points on nine shots. So once again, we know this. They've got the big three. The other role players need to get going a little bit better here, way more consistent. We need Patrick Beverly to be that kind of defensive hound that we know he can be. We need this Timberwolves team to start closing the deal, getting it done in the fourth quarter, getting it done in the clutch. So that's the next step that they have to take. They have not taken that yet. Grizzlies get the win, 116-108. to 108. Alrighty, next game up here. We didn't bet on this game. I was close to betting this game, but we didn't. Uh, Clippers at the Pelicans, and once again, you can't bet 
the Clippers without Paul George, and that's exactly what happened last night. Pelicans get the win, 113-89, a nice dominant blowout win here for this Pelicans team. Brandon Ingram, 24 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, fantastic. Valanchunas, 18 points, 16 rebounds, and then all the other starters got it done as well. Herbert Jones, 14 points, 3 steals, 3 assists, 6 rebounds, and uh, Josh Hart, 12 points, 3 assists, 5 rebounds, and Devontae Graham at the 1, 13 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds, all that was great. And then Jackson Hayes. Ooh, Jackson Hayes. Back-to-back -back games. Getting it done off the bench. We love it. 13 points on 100% shooting. 5 of 5 from the field. 1 of 1 from the 3. 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Yes, sir. Get it done in only 16 minutes. Making the most of it. You gotta love it. Shout out to the Pelicans for the win. And then the Clippers. Once again, just no Paul George. So now the leading scorer is Terrence Mann. 15 points coming off the bench. Reggie Jackson in the starting lineup, 5 points on 18% shooting. Amir Coffey, 5 points in the starting lineup on 28% shooting. Zubak, 6 points at the 5, 60% shooting. Nicholas Batum, 6 points at the 4, 40% shooting. What are we supposed to do with these numbers, folks? What are we supposed to do? Marcus Morris at the 3, 12 points on 1 of 9 from the 3. 21% shooting on 14 shots. They need Paul George. You cannot bet this Clippers team consistently and confidently if Paul George is not out there on the floor folks we need him back and they need him back quickly because this Clippers team is reeling at the current moment folks Clippers are currently the eighth seed in the Western Conference four and six in their last 10 21 and 22 record when they were with Paul George they were consistent they were competitive they were winning games I want to say they were in the top six um, in the Western Conference now they're number eight here falling quickly Paul George he needs to get back man so Clippers lose big time here, 113-89 to the Pelicans. All right, then we get the Thunder at the Nets, and wow, look at this. Nice upset win here for this Thunder team. 130 points. They win 130-109 to 109 over the Nets. No Kevin Durant last night. Kyrie Irving can't play because it's at home, so it's just James Harden out there by his lonesome. 26 points, 3 blocks, 3 steals, 9 assists, 7 rebounds, trying to do his damnedest to single-handedly win the game. He took 22 shots. You know, he took the most by far. The second highest shots was Cam Thomas. Thomas coming off the bench with 18. Um, so James Harden, 3 of 11 from the 3, 31% on 22 shots, just trying everything. Unfortunately, they did not have enough offensive pieces. Another thing that we know about this Nets team. And as we start, you know, we're kind of in the thick of it, you know, tour, you know, of the middle part of the season. So we're starting to see true teams showing their true colors. Do the first kind of one, two, three weeks of the season, is that what they really are? Or are they more just kind of worse than that now that we are at this midpoint of the season and can truly evaluate? evaluate an entire kind of first half of the season body of work and now we are starting to know what these teams truly are and we know this Nets team they don't have the offense without Kevin Durant and it's unfortunate. Uh, second leading scorer was Cam Thomas coming off the bench, 21 points. We had David Duke Jr. coming off the bench with 13 points, but everybody else in the starting lineup, man, oh, man. They need Kyrie Irving. No Patty Mills either last night. Why the hell is Patty Mills taking the night off when Kevin Durant's out? Patty Mills, you better get your ass to this game in any capacity. I don't give a damn. But, uh, yeah, missing so many pieces last night. Nets could not hang. And then for the Thunder, for this giant win, Shea Gillis-Alexander, 30 points, 9 assists. 10 rebounds on 61% shooting. Absolutely fantastic. Lugan stored a solid uh, offensive pro for performance last night. 27 points, 6 of 10 from the 3. And then Josh Giddy, who's been really solid here uh, over the last couple of weeks. 19 points, 7 assists, shooting 3 of 11 from the 3. Not the greatest. 47% on 17 shots. Alrighty. Uh, but either way, we'll take those 19 big old points. That is our 10 minutes, but we still got one game to go here, so let's wrap it up here. Thunder get the win, 130-109 to 109 over the Nets. And then the last game of the night here, the Blazers at the Nuggets. Nuggets get the win, 140-108. to 108. And remember, folks, yes, this Nuggets team is... They've been winning decently over the last couple of games here, but it's always against kind of the bottom of the barrel team. So, yes, the Nuggets are kind of winning at the current moment, but there is still no bet ability on this team. Yes, they beat the Blazers with no McCollum and Lillard, but also no Anthony Simons last night. And we know that's kind of the new identity of this Blazers team. Now that we know Damian Lillard's out for 
mm, potentially the season. They probably won't even bring him back because the time that he's healthy, when he can come back, they'll probably already be eliminated from playoff contention. Um, so there is just nothing great by this Blazers team. So yeah, Joe Kick can single-handedly beat this Blazers team. There's nothing good on this team. So Nuggets get the big old dominant win, 140-108. to 108. For the Nuggets, here we go. Jokic, 20 points, 7 assists, 8 rebounds. And, folks, get this. Once again, why we, can, why we can't buy this Nuggets team? Aaron Gordon, folks. The Nuggets put up 140 points. So, you're probably saying to yourself, Aaron Gordon had a great night. He probably contributed 25, 30 points. No, no, no. 5 points by Aaron Gordon. 5 points. Everybody, everybody outscored Aaron Gordon last night on the Nuggets besides 2 players. And they played a a combined seven minutes. Devon Reed only scored three points and Marcus Howard only scored three points. They played seven minutes combined. Everybody else. Everybody else. I'm talking Jeff Green, 19 points. Jokic, 20 points. Will Barton, 21 points. Monte Morris, nine points. Austin Rivers, nine points. Facondo Capazzo, 18 points. Zika Naji, 16 points. Bones, Highland, 17 points. Literally everybody outscored Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon is not an offensive player. We know this, folks. So once again, yes, the Nuggets are beating some of the bottom of the barrel teams, but still no bad ability, by ability here for this Nuggets team. And then for the Blazers, I mean, ha I mean, this was their starting lineup. Dennis Smith, Ben McLemore, Nurchich, Covington, and Nasir Little. I mean, folks, what is this? Uh, so leading scorer was Ben McLemore, 18 points. We'll give him a little credit there. Nurchich down low, 10 points, 6 assists, 8 rebounds. And then we had Dennis Smith Jr. filling in at the 1 for Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard. 17 points, 8 assists. It was pretty solid. But overall, there is nothing. there's no depth here. There's no superstars here on this team. There's just nothing here. So unfortunate for this. Blazers team unfortunate for Chauncey Billups as well who you know trying to make his coaching debut and has absolutely nothing to work with so Nuggets get the big old dominant win 140 to 108 Alrighty, that was all the NBA from last night let's see what we've got on tap for tonight folks we're looking to go back to back I want it back to back. All right, folks, we just re-got it going last night, and let's keep it going. Let's prove that was not a fluke, and we are truly back on track. Tons of games on in the NBA tonight, so there's tons of value to evaluate and find, folks. We're not going to get too greedy. We're not going to get too cocky. We're just finding the best value of the night like we did last night. Can we do it again? Of course we can. Don't disrespect us by ever questioning us again, folks. What are you, crazy? All righty, so here we go. Let's find the value. First game up here. Celtics at the 76ers. Celtics plus three and a half. 76ers only minus three and a half. What the heck is up with that? Must be some big outs for the 76ers team with the spread this low. What are you, crazy? So here we go. Marcus Smart is out for the Celtics. For the 76ers, Danny Green is out. And that's it. What? 76ers only minus three and a half. What is this? What is this? We get everybody good to go for the 76ers. Tyrese Maxey, obviously Joel Embiid. This uh, seems a little trappish. Why would we bet on the Celtics? Yes, they've got Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and they've been kind of getting it done. They finally have been able to kind of work together on the floor to come tribute to actual wins as of recent but is this outlier is this really the future of the Celtics so I don't believe it is the future of the Celtics no Marcus Smart which is you know kind of what we want so expect Dennis Schroeder at the one Jason Jalen Brown at the two uh, so I think I'm going to take the 76ers minus three and a half. Yeah, Robert Williams has been solid here for the Celtics team, but it's still at the end of the day, it's Joel Embiid. I'm not, I'm not ready to say the Celtics team is ready to start being competitive or even beating these better middle of the road, upper echelon teams in the NBA. And the 76ers team, folks, this is a good team. They've got shooters. They got beef. They got vision. They've got facilitators. They've got solid coaching all around here. So give me the 76ers only have to swallow three and a half. I'm loving the value here. I'm not buying into the Celtics team at all, folks. Right off the rip, we're already finding good value. 76 is minus three and a half. We love it. All right, then we get the Magic at the Hornets. 
Hornets have been playing really good here um, as of recent. They just beat the 76ers, who we are betting on, and uh, so the 76ers better have a better performance than what they did on Wednesday night. Uh, but yeah, we're going to stay away from this one. You know, this Magic team, they're starting to potentially, um, you know, take the next step in to start beating some of the better teams. They're being competitive. Uh, they're usually covering the spread. Um, but this Hornets team, they've just been on a tear recently. This Hornets team is 7-3 and three in their last 10 four-game winning streak. Don't want to swallow all these points when we don't have to, so we'll stay away from betting on this one. All right, then we get the Suns at the Pacers, and another spread that's maybe just a little bit too low here. Suns minus only 5.5 here on the road. Pacers plus 5.5. Y'all know how we feel about the Pacers. Never bet them. They never win. And then for the Suns, Frank Kaminsky is still out. Dario Sherrick is still out, and Cameron Johnson is a game-time decision. So uh, the depth is going to take a, a, a tad of a hit. Nothing too concerning. And then for the Pacers... We get Torrey Craig, a game-time decision, and Malcolm Brogdon, a game-time decision. So, Suns here, fantastic all throughout this season. Best, One of the best teams in the league, hands down, 6-4 and four in their last 10. Just beat the Raptors on the road um, the other night, and I believe, did we bet them? Did we bet on them? Um, something around that. Um, but either way, Suns here, minus 5.5 here on the road. This Pacers team, it's just nothing good, folks. They're not competitive. They don't ever even challenge the better teams. They challenge, you know, the middle of the road, bottom of the barrel teams. But, you know, this Suns team, best one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Are they the number one seed? I believe they are since uh, this Warriors little bit of a skid that they're on. Yeah, uh, Suns are now the number one seed in the Western Conference. So, yeah, we'll swallow 5.5 here with them as well. I've got no problem swallowing points with greatness. Alrighty, so finding some great value here. Alrighty tonight, we love it. And we still got like six games to go, so here we go. Let's keep it up. Next game up, Raptors at the Pistons. Raptors minus nine, Pistons plus nine. This Raptors team has been on an absolute tear as of recently as well. Uh, Fred Van Vliet has been going on his curry bullshit over the last mm, three weeks here. It's been fantastic. Uh, outs. We get Goran Dragic is still out for the Raptors. Gary Trent Jr. is a game time decision, and Scotty Barnes is a game time decision. We need them for their offensive efficiency. And then for the Pistons, we still get Jeremy Grant out, and we don't bet the Pistons anyway. So um, I love I love the Raptors. Don't get me wrong, but not ready to swallow nine with them on the road, especially when we've got other great value. No need to push it. Then we get the Warriors at the Bulls. Warriors plus three and a half. Bulls minus three and a half. Another spread that's wonky as heck. Warriors on the back to back, so we're staying away from betting this game all day. Together, uh, but the Bulls minus three and a half. What is up with that? Derek Jones is out, obviously, as we know, just got injured last game. But the big four is all good, and the Warriors, Draymond Green is still out. Draymond Green still out. Back to back game just got absolutely obliterated last night. Bulls minus three is looking like good value, but we don't bet back to backs either way. The team that's on the back to back or the opponent uh, facing the team that is on the back to back, and why we don't do that. The back-to-back -back team, the team that is playing in back-to-back, -back, they either are going to be warmed up so they'll have an advantage over the other team or they're going to be sluggish and tired because they just played the night before. So you never know what you're going to get, so we just stay away from it in totality. Uh, but if y'all bat back-to-backs, I would say Bulls minus 3.5 is the better play of that matchup if you're itching to bet just that matchup. All right, here we go. Then the next game up, we get the Hawks at the Heat. Hawks plus four and a half, Heat minus four and a half. So look at that. Heat getting respect here. Minus points, even at home. Let's see. Is Jimmy Butler good to go? Jimmy Butler, game time decision. Bam Adebayo is still out for the Hawks. Clint Capella out, and that's big. <clears throat> that's big for them having no big down low. And then Kevin Herter, game time decision alongside Jalen Johnson for the Hawks. So love this Heat team. Y'all know it. Now that they're kind of being favored here, does Vegas know a little something? So we'll stay away from this game as well. We've got other two great values, so we don't need to push anything. Heat minus four and a half is looking solidly appetizing, especially with this Hawks team skidding. Three and seven in their last ten three-game losing streak. They got to get it back together. Having no Clint Capella is not, not going to make it easy for them tonight. All right, then we get the Cavs at the Spurs. Cavs minus three and a half. Spurs plus three and a half here, and potentially some great value. I think we're taking the Cavs if everybody's good to go here. Uh, just the usual suspects are out for the Cavs. Rajon Rondo is a game time decision, and for the Spurs, Derek White game time decision. Drew Eubanks a game time decision. So this Cavs team, we know they're great, and this Spurs team is just not great. So this Cavs team should have no problem covering three and a half here. Expect. 
Darius Garland to go crazy, Mobley to go crazy, and Jared Allen to go crazy because there's really nobody to stop him on the Spurs team. Cavs minus three and a half. All right, then we get the Mavericks at the Grizzlies. Mavericks plus two, Grizzlies minus two. Grizzlies on the back-to-back. We'll stay away from it. Then we get the Rockets at the Kings, and these are two trash teams, so we're staying away from this one as well. Rockets plus five, Kings minus five. No, thank you either way. So there it is, folks. A nice little three-teamer with some great value. We could have probably expanded expanded it to a four-teamer, maybe even a five-teamer. Honestly, all right, this is what we're going to do, folks. This is how I'm going to present the information to y'all, and I'll let y'all do whatever the heck you want. These are the best values of the night, folks. 76ers minus three and a half. Suns minus five and a half. And the Cavs minus three and a half. Those are all fantastic value indoors. All of those. Now, if you want to spice it up a little bit, folks, add on to it. Bulls minus three and a half. And the Bulls minus three and a half in the Heat minus four and a half. If you want to get crazy for a five teamer, we would add those other good bets. Bulls minus three and a half in Heat minus four and a half. So overall, five good values over round. Three are better than the other two, but overall, they're all still good value nonetheless. So that's what we've got rocking tonight. Officially, 76ers minus three and a half, Suns minus five and a half, Cavs minus three and a half. Unofficially, Bulls minus three and a half alongside. Heat minus four and a half. But feeling good here tonight, folks. Swallowing points and not feeling bad about it. All righty. That is all the NBA we had to go over for today. So now let's shift gears to the NFL. And we will make our official picks. We will talk through the MVP and all that. Uh, but before we get into all of that breaking news as of yesterday, and this is exactly what we did not want to see. What the hell? What the absolute hack is this, folks? The Houston Texans have fired David Culley after one year? Why, why, why? We liked what David Culley has done. They kept it competitive, really, throughout the entire season. They won right off the rip with Tyrod Taylor. Then Tyrod Taylor gets injured, and then they have to bring in third-round rookie, not a top-10 rookie quarterback pick, a third-round rookie to try and start to win with, even though their plan was not to play this man in the beginning. And what what did they do? Did they get beat? Let's get up the official scores here. Um, I, I, I know they got blown out in a couple of games, but I, I believe they were all kind of when Davis Mills was making kind of his rookie debut. So let's get the Texans' full schedule up here quickly um, and just see how many times they really got blown out this season. They obviously made it competitive down the stretch here. Davis Mills, after Tyrod Taylor came back, he still wasn't getting it done. Davis Mills came and was really competitive and started to look pretty solid as the season progressed, like the natural rookie quarterback progression. I mean, that happens all the time, folks. Obviously, the more games you get under your belt, the better you are. So week one, they beat the Jaguars, bingo, bingo with Tyrod Taylor. But then they go on this big old losing stretch because it's Davis Mills at the helm. And it's unfortunate, but it's rookie third round pick Davis Mills. They lose to the Browns, but only by 10. That's not bad. That's a, no, I'm not calling that a blowout. They get blown out by the Panthers 24 to nine. Now that's an inexcusable, but that was when the Panthers early on in the season, week three, when they were kind of pretenders overall. Then they lose to the Bills 40 to nothing. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. The Bills, you know, obviously were pretty solid, but they didn't really close out this game to the second half anyway, like we know. Um, and also, we know the worst thing about this Texans team was kind of the defense. The deep ball defense was the glaring mark that we saw uh, hurt the Jaguars from week one all the way up to week 18. So the defense was truly lacking here. But overall, David Culley, he had no weapons. The only one weapon this man had was Brandon Cooks, wide receiver. That was it. That's all David Culley had to work with. Um, so let's keep it up here. Uh, after they get blown out by the Bills, they keep it competitive against the Patriots. Remember, they were winning the entire game. Davis Mills, a fantastic night. 293 yards, only eight incompletions, three touchdowns, no picks. But unfortunately, they just kind of, you know, were a little lackluster in the second half. Bill Belichick made the necessary adjustments and gets a close three-point win. Then they get blown out by the Colts, 31-3. They get blown out by the Cardinals, 31-5. They got kind of blown out by the Rams, 38-2. 22. They kept it close against the Dolphins, 17 to 9. Then they get the win against the Titans, 22 to 13. I believe that was Tyrod Taylor with the nice win there. 
Then they lose to the Jets 21 to 14, lose to the Colts 31 to nothing, lose to the Seahawks 33 to 13. But then the final four weeks when Davis Mills kind of comes back and is like, all righty, I can do this. They beat the Jags again 30 to 16. They beat the Chargers, their best win of the season 41 to 29. They lose to the 49ers 23 to 7. And then they just lost to the Titans 28 to 25 in the season finale. But keeping it close all game long, division rival Titans trying to lock up the number one seed and the Texans took it to him and kept it close and let Davis Mills come back in the second half so I just think it was a little bit too premature to fire the man he had some lows this season don't get me wrong but given the entire circumstances with this Texans team of the Deshaun Watson news and Tyrod Taylor and now Davis Mills and having absolutely no running game they had no running game identity now was that a little bit of David Culley we did like the running back pieces David Johnson they had Philip Lindsay they decided to use Rex Burkhead at the end of the season even though he has not played really the entire year here they just got who was it um uh, Danny Amendola just got going here for the Texans in their final game so maybe that's why they fired him because it all just kind of took a little bit too late to try to see what you had out there um, maybe, but we also get this right here. The Houston Texans, David Culley disagreed on offensive changes and the choice was made to go in another direction for head coach per the NFL network. So maybe the Texans don't like Davis Mills and David Culley was like, no, we're going to rock with Davis Mills. I mean, this is his first year. We're going to give him a second look. Yes. Maybe we still draft a quarterback, uh, but we still got Deshaun Watson as well. Or maybe the team wants to go with Deshaun Watson. David Culley doesn't. But what we do know for sure is that David Culley disagreed on offensive changes. So we'll see what the Texans do this offseason to see what the changes are. Because obviously the Texans, they're going to go with what they want as an organization. That's why they pushed out David Culley. So whatever the Texans do do offensively this season, it is kind of decent to say that David Culley did not agree with that. So we'll know more information as the offseason progresses, as you know teams start bringing in in, other coaches, other offensive pieces, seeing what they do in the draft at quarterback, see what they do in free agency at quarterback. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, disrespecting David Culley like this. And once again, I would take every football, on-field football action out of the equation here. How David Culley handled the Deshaun Watson big old distraction, I think it deserves an award, folks. That alone deserves to stay at least one more year, at least, but it also deserves an award of its own. I mean, we obviously can't give him coach of the year, but I mean, at some some point, he deserves an award for um, least distracted team. In the, in the season, during the season, that Deshaun Watson news wasn't even really talked about during the NFL season. It was talked about maybe at two points um, at the very beginning when, it, when the news was fresh and then at the trade deadline. But after that, nobody, that was never a factor. That was never a question after games, before games. Hey, how are you, you know, how's the team handling Deshaun Watson? How's all that going? David Culley really ran a tight ship here in Houston. Unfortunately, they disagreed on offensive changes and that's all it takes so we'll see what the Texans do they've got no t no more time for experimentation they had enough experimentation with Bill O'Brien and they you know kind of bought into Bill O'Brien maybe a year or two too many here um, obviously we you know that he kind of ruined the organization altogether but uh, you know with David Culley now moving forward they're like no 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 we're not letting that happen again we're not going to go from you know having greatness here and then bringing in a coach and then getting rid of our all of our good pieces and ruining our name and then destroying all the work we kind of had for the team ruining it kind of almost instantly so they're gonna just do whatever they want they're not letting these uh, coaches dictate what this Texans team is moving forward so unfortunate here I doubt David Culley gets another head coaching job right off the rip uh, now that we know that about eight teams are still in the uh, in the process of looking for a head coach. So we'll see what David Culley does. But truly unfortunate here, uh, Texans, they were the last one to do it. They kind of were like, hey, teasing us a little bit. Hey, end of the season, Monday comes, Tuesday comes. No, 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 David Culley's fine. Wednesday comes. No, David Culley's all good. Thursday come. Uh, all right. Yeah, David Culley, you're out of here. So. 
They disagreed on offensive changes, folks. We'll see what those offensive changes are as the offseason progresses. Alrighty, that is all of this story I just wanted to touch on quickly. So now, let's go and make our official picks of the week. Let's do the picks, and then we'll walk through and talk through the NFL MVP. So here we go, folks. We predicted and reacted to these lines yesterday, and we found some really solid value, folks. There is some really good value here this week. There's also some questionable value. I mean, Vegas has gave us some good stuff but then also made it tough so we do still have three sections here we do our two sections we do our locks and our 99 percent guarantees we will be picking all the matchups here uh but we will put them in you know how we're feeling once I, once again i said some great value those will be our locks some uh all right value kind of playing the line game really close here but we still think we're making the right selection those are going to be our 99 percent guarantees and then there's one game this week that i think is the hardest to call it's probably the toughest matchup because both teams are true kind of super bowl kind of aspiring teams they were talked about as Super Bowl contenders the entire year maybe the back end of the season maybe made it a little bit more fuzzy uh, but overall these are two still talented teams when they're at the top of their A game and this one's just too tough to call so we're going to put it in a 98% guarantee section and we're going to watch a little bit of film on it just to see because there's two glaring, jarring uh, issues with both of these teams that were like, oh, this is big bad, and this is probably why they're going to lose, but they both have it, and then there's points involved, and road team involved, and home team involved, and how do they go, and all this, so I've been racking my brain. Ever since we revealed the line yesterday on the show, I've just been racking my brain. Which side do we go? What is the play here? God, give me a sign! And so far, he has just not given us a sign, so we got to do it ourselves, folks. We got to take Take action and matters into our own hands. Womp womp. Alrighty here. Uh, but let's refresh these lines one more time. And let's also remind y'all what we did last week, week 18. Uh, so here we go. What we did last week, we had two locks last week, Bucks minus eight. That one hit bingo bango over the Panthers. Y'all know uh, how we feel about the Panthers. Uh, then we also took the Titans minus 10. They were up 21 0 in the first half, second half. Way more competitive. I think they only won by like three or four. So, unfortunately, that one did not hit. Then we had the Raiders plus three. Bingo, bango. They take care of business in overtime. Chiefs minus 10. Once again, you know, Chiefs just could not close it out. And that's going to be, you know, a point of emphasis potentially this week of taking points. Points matters. And we've got some evidence to back that up. Uh, but Chiefs minus 10 last week. No, no. Texans were way more competitive. Then we had the Steelers plus four. They went out right. Bingo, bango. And then we had a special category of betting on coaches last week. Take Taking the Lions plus three and a half. Bingo, bango. Dan Campbell, a great coach. He's got our blessing. He's got our green flag heading into this offseason. Well done, Dan Campbell. They went outright. Don't need the three and a half. Then we took the Jets plus 16 and a half. Betting on Robert Sala. And they lose by 16. 15 plus 15 and a half. They lost by 17. I think we took it at 16 and a half at game day. Jets plus 15 and a half, 16 and a half, whatever it is. They didn't cover it anyway because Robert Sala floundered big time in the fourth quarter. So what are we doing here? No, we, we don't have any blessing. We don't have any green flags on Robert Sala heading into this offseason. We will be brutal on Robert Sala this entire year. You give up the final week. You give up in the fourth quarter. What is that? What kind of coaching is that? You don't see Dan Campbell doing that. No, no, no. So Robert Sala, a little bit of a bad taste in our mouth. All right, that's what we did last week, so let's do a lot better this week. Let's go six for six, yes, in the playoffs when it truly matters, yes? All righty, here we go. Let's start with our three locks this week, and the first lock we are going to take, and this is the easiest bet, the best bet, the, the, the lock of the locks, if you will, folks. Chiefs minus 12 and a half, folks. We would swallow 55 points here. I'm predicting a 55 to 0 win here by the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs at home. Chiefs offense is going to be good to go. Tyreek Hill should be good to go for this game. 
So that's all we need to know. We're done with this game. We can move on. The lock of the lock. Chiefs minus 12 and a half. That's all you need to know. Big Ben's arm, folks. Come on. Come on. We're going to believe into that. We're going to believe into the, the hype, the magic. Even Big Ben himself says, yeah, we've got no chance to win this game. Mike Tomlin was celebrating in the locker room after the win. After the win alone. And they were still not even secured into the playoff spot until that night game. The Raiders-Chargers game was truly deciding their fate. But Mike Tomlin in the locker room knew, hey, this is it. <laughs> this is all we're going to do. This is the win. This is our Super Bowl. So, yeah, I'm going to you know, celebrate with my team. How many times have we seen Mike Tomlin dance in the locker room with his players? Maybe a handful of times at most. It rarely happens. So when it does happen, it's a big occasion. And we know why. Because the Steelers have no chance. If I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to put the show on the line. If the Steelers win this week over the Chiefs, I am done with the show. I will cancel takes by fans. I'll give it to one of y'all, one of the loyal fans listening. I'll let y'all run the show. If the Steelers win, it doesn't matter. The NFL, nothing matters in the NFL. Breaking it down, watching the film, talking about it, nothing matters. So why should we do it? If the Steelers win, we are done with takes by fans. I am done with the show. Nothing matters. Everything is pointless. And there's there's no reason to go on, folks, if the Steelers win. Big Ben, folks. What the hell? Are we betting on Big Ben this week? No, of course we can't. Now, the Steelers defense is solid. This is a solid defense here. And if, if the Steelers have any chance to win, obviously we know it's going to come from the defense like it has been the last couple of weeks here. Uh, Steelers winning out the last two weeks to secure this playoff spot somehow. Absolutely wild. Uh, once again, we, never for, we will never forgive Carson Wentz for this. Uh, but yeah, it's just this Steelers offense is one of the worst things ever, 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 ever. One of the worst offenses in the history of the NFL. Najee Harris a little banged up as well, so they can't even be like, well, we can just at least run the ball. No, you can't. You can't anymore. So they can't They can't throw the ball. They're not going to be able to run the ball. Juju Smith-Schuster may be back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is he going to catch the ball? No, because Big Ben can't throw the ball. Chiefs defense got a little exposed last week, but I expect that to be shored up a little bit. Chiefs at home looking to get back to the Super Bowl. This is back-to-back -back participations of the Super Bowl, folks. This is not a scrub team. I know y'all know they're not a scrub team, but this is not a scrub team where Big Ben's a little bit of a wink and wonker, like we know, dinking and dunking, winking and wonking. Mike Tomlin's good. The defense is good, so if the Steelers win, it has their handprints all over it. I doubt that happens. We're talking playoffs now. Yes, the Steelers, uh, I mean, the Steelers won last week. But it was against Tyler Huntley's Ravens, once again. And that Ravens offense is not a good passing offense, so you can't just plug and play quarterbacks in there. Yeah, Tyler Huntley's got some decent legs like Lamar Jackson. He's got a decent arm like Lamar Jackson, but he doesn't have that it factor like Lamar Jackson does. So that Ravens team lost like the final six games of the season. Is that a good team? No, it's not. We know the Steelers really should not be in this position. So, of course, we cannot bet them. And, of course, we're swallowing 12 and a half here with this Chiefs team. Lock of the locks, folks. Best bet of the week. All righty, here we go. Next lock here. And we lost a ton of value over the last, like, two hours. What the hell? Y'all are betting it, and I can't even blame y'all. So, y'all made the right decision, but y'all stole a point and a half of value. Y'all stole an entire point and a half value from me. Mm -hmm. All right, but we're going Eagles plus eight here, folks. Eagles plus eight. We know this Eagles team offensively is good. The running game is good. Jalen Hurts with the passing game is good. And Jalen Hurts is going to be able to go this week. Tom Brady, tons of turnovers in the playoffs. We've seen it by this man last year. No Antonio Brown, only having to really focus on Mike Evans. How is that going to play out? Leonard Fournette should be back this game, but first game back, is he going to be able to kind of go balls to the wall week one here? Eagles, not starting Jalen Hurts last week. Can't get it done with just Gardner Minshew, um, which is fine because Gardner Minshew does not have that extra element of running as a quarterback. Jalen Hurts does, and they utilize that, and they capitalize that, and that is the offense. This Eagles offense is taking everybody's talents and utilizing them to perfection, letting Devontae Smith have those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Jalen, Smith, uh, Jalen Hurts recognizing those one-on-one -on -one matchups and giving him a 50-50 ball, ball that Devontae Smith, for the most part, 
part wins because he's a great wide receiver. Nick Sirianni allowing Jalen Hurts the freedom to run the ball and incorporating designed quarterback runs into the game to get the defense off balance and all that. So we love that by the Eagles team. We love Nick Sirianni. He's a great coach. Good coach. Should we go go good? Do we do dare? I'll, I'll, I'll declare him great after this game if he's competitive and keeps it close. Uh, but so far, good year one here. Running game has been consistent. Passing game has been consistent. Defense has been consistent all year long. Now, another huge factor in this game is it's about to be a tsunami out there in Tampa Bay. We're talking guaranteed rain. We're talking like 99% guaranteed rain over there and like 20 to 40 mile an hour wind. So it's going to be wet. It's going to be windy. It's going to be raining probably throughout the entirety of the game. So lesser scoring game, less passing. Eagles already had that established run alongside. Jalen Hurd's dual threat ability so you can fake the pass and still run in the pouring torrential downpour rain so just getting points regardless is a pretty good value here and we're getting 8 which is the second highest most points the highest spread game is the Chiefs game minus 12 the second is this Eagles team I'm taking the points here with the Eagles Bucks kept it close last season against the Washington football team and Taylor Heineke if Taylor Heineke can keep a game close I'm sure Jalen Hurts can as well I know Washington was at home last season so a little bit of a difference but not totality wise so Tom Brady's been having multiple games with multiple interceptions this season does it in the postseason it's not 100% 100% guarantee that the Bucks win this game, folks. I remember I told y'all a couple weeks ago, I was chatting with an Eagles fan, one of my buddies, and I was like, hey, facing Tom Brady and the Bucks is probably your best chance of getting out of the first round. He called me crazy. I would have called me crazy um, if you told me, you know, any time during the last 20 years, hey, the Dolphins can make the playoffs um, if they just beat Tom Brady. I'd be like, all right, <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. Um, so, love the Eagles here. Love them plus the eight. Do kind of expect a little bit of an upset here. So you would have a little bit of an endorsement. You know, I'm not talking about spending tons of money on this, but a couple of bucks on the money line here. Eagle straight up. I would toss a few bucks onto that. I do love the eight, though. That's where all the money is going, though. Plus the eight. And like I said, y'all are betting the nine and a half. That's why it's fallen in the last two hours from Eagles plus nine and a half to Eagles plus eight because y'all are taking those points. And I think that is the better play overall. Eagle goes plus the eight here and then we have uh do we have this is this up no um all right so yes eagles plus eight folks love it tom brady He's great. We know Tom Brady's great. We know Bruce Aarons is great. We know Todd Bowles is great. But at the end of the day, playoff games are usually a little close. Yeah, let's talk about this just quickly, quickly, quickly here. Here we go. What about wild card games? Are usually wild card games competitive or are they usually just blowouts? Is points good value or should we be swallowing points based on the last couple of years' history in the wild card game? So let's quickly go back. I want to go back to like 2018, the last three years, just to kind of see blowouts or is it competitive is points just at a baseline first look the better play for the majority of the games here so here we go last year's wild card games Colts at Bills Bills win by 3 27 24 Rams and Seahawks Rams win by 10 30 to 20 Bucks Washington Bucks win by 8 to 31 to 23 Ravens Titans Ravens win by 7 20 to 13 Bears Saints Saints win 21 to 9 that's a little bit of a blowout and then the Browns Steelers Browns win 48 to 37 once again Steelers got blown out in that game yes they still put up 37 points but remember it was like 28 nothing at the first quarter so swallowing 12 here with the Chiefs is the right call yes the Steelers defense was good last season as well I don't think as good as it was at this point of the season Last year, just because of uh, they had a lot of injuries at the back end, where they're kind of starting to get healthy here at the back end. But still, at the end of the day, it's big bends, bad arm, all those turnovers, all that allowed the Browns to get it to that big lead, and then they just coasted for the rest of the game, and they still won by 11 on the road. Chiefs minus 12 and a half. Yes, 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 yes. Best bat of the week, folks, okay? So, Steelers get blown out when all the other games are usually, for the most part, close, okay? Big Ben, he's... He's done. He's washed. We know this. So all these games last season were relatively close. No real big blowouts except, except the ones that we should have expected like the Steelers and like Mitch Trubisky with the Bears. Yes, yes, yes. All right.
Now, let's go to 2019. Same thing or just a completely different? Everybody's getting blown out. Let's quickly see. 2019, wild card games. Bills and Texans. Texans win by three, 22 to 19. Deshaun Watson getting it done. Uh, Titans at the Patriots. Titans win by seven, 20 to 13. Derrick Henry getting it done. We get Vikings at the Saints. I believe that's the miracle. No. Vikings win 26 to 20. Or I believe this is, is this the other game? Whatever it is. It's, um, it, it was wild. Uh, Viking. No, this is a pass inter- Is this a pass interference? Controversial call for the Saints. A couple of controversial calls for the Saints uh, during Drew Brees' last playoff runs. Unfortunate, but either way, it's a close game. Vikings win twenty six to twenty. Then we get the Eagles and the Seahawks, and this was a close game. Eagles win seventeen to nine, one possession game. So all these games were one possession, no blowouts in twenty nineteen. What about twenty eighteen? Still the same thing. Here we go. Colts at the Texans. Colts win twenty one to seven. A little bit of a blowout, fourteen point win. We get Seahawks at the Cowboys. Cowboys win by two, twenty four to twenty two. Chargers at the Ravens. Chargers win by six, 23 to 17. And then the Eagles and the Bears. Eagles win by one, 16 to 15. So overall, just optically on the baseline, just talking about it, points are usually the way to go here, folks. So Eagles plus D8, still loving it. Alrighty, and then our last lock right here. We've got, uh, we're going to go Bills, or Patriots, plus four and a half here. Playing a little bit of the points game. I believe, once again, this is going to be a close competitive game. So anything over kind of like three, three and a half, feeling really good. And we get four and a half here. Yes, yes, yes. Another game where weather is going to play a huge factor. It is going to be cold, folks. And when I mean cold, I mean freezing, shivering, bro. Cold, like I don't even want to go to the game. Cold, like I would go to any game, but you give me this game, I may be second guessing. I still go to the game at the end of the day, but I'm second guessing going to the game just because it's going to be that gosh dang cold out there. So, getting hit, nobody's going to really want to get hit. Nobody's really want to catch those balls that are going to be like literally. I, like ice blocks they're gonna be hard as ice they're gonna be cold as ice while your hand is already cold as ice so it's gonna be cold the ball's gonna be hard all of that so maybe expect a little bit more running and that's where we like the Patriots Ramondre Stevenson Ramondre Stevenson played game one uh Bill's Patriots Patriots win. Reminder Stevenson does not play game two. I believe Damian Harris played all of game two. Bills, Patriots, and the Bills win in a little bit of blowout fashion. I believe the Patriots kept it optically close at the end of the game. Um, and then reminder Stevenson back again this week, wild card week on the road, division rival, Bill Belichick, ready to pump up that defense, knows how to win. Now that you've got two bodies of work, what won against the Bills, what did not win against the Bills, running game worked against the Bills, Mac Jones got to get him off to a fast start if you know, we're going to rely on him to win us the game instead of having the running backs win us the game. But with the cold being a factor, with the Bills never taking advantage of their home field, never blowing out teams and establishing dominance presence offensively, defensively, right from the get-go, I'm going to just take the points here. I'm taking the points, taking Bill Belichick, I'm taking Ramondre Stevenson, and I'm taking the four and a half here. Josh Allen is just Josh Allen. You've just got to shut Josh Allen down. That's all it is. We don't care about the Bills running game. Even when it was windy as heck, game one, that's why the Patriots only ran the ball. Mac Jones throwing the ball three times. The Bills still decided to pass the ball kind of throughout the game here. They are adamant on getting Josh Allen the ball and letting him single-handedly win or lose them the game. So they did that in wild, windy weather. They're still going to do that in wild cold as heck frigid as heck freezing a lot of frostbite going to be happening in this game tickets are like four dollars folks you can go to a home buffalo bills playoff game for like four dollars folks because it is so gosh dang cold okay that's how cold it is they're selling playoff tickets for about four dollars okay so, give me the Patriots plus four and a half. Remind Dre Stevenson, we need you back so gosh dang much. I need to see Remind Dre Stevenson go crazy. Um, we got to see one more action here by Remind Dre Stevenson that hopefully results in a win because we absolutely love that man. So, those are our locks, folks. We're going Chiefs minus 12 and a half. 
Eagles plus eight, Patriots plus four and a half here. We would take the points here with the Steelers, but it's Big Ben. We obviously can't. So we'll swallow points there, but we're taking points everywhere else. Games are usually close. Even last week, um, Texans kept it close. Jaguars won. It was wild. Raiders kept it close. And everybody was, uh, Raiders won. They straight up won. And we didn't really know Raiders over the Chargers. Everyone was big on the Chargers. We weren't. We got that right. But either way, teams are going to be competitive this week. They were last week with nothing on the line. Nothing on the line. Chiefs couldn't blow them out. Who did the Chiefs face? Because they couldn't blow them out. We took the pick. Tex, uh, Titans and the Texans. Chiefs and the division opponent. It wasn't the Bengals. It wasn't the Raiders. And it. Who, who the hell did the Chiefs play last week? I can't even remember. It was a Saturday game. It was the first game. So that's why we don't remember. It was a, the, the earliest. Uh, the Broncos. Oh, how could we forget? Of course, the Broncos. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the Broncos kept it close. Drew Locke kept it close. Games will be close. Patriots plus four and a half. I'm taking the points. So those are our locks, folks. Chiefs minus 12 and a half. Eagles plus eight. And the Patriots plus four and a half. Alrighty, now our two 99% guarantees, folks. Feeling good about these, feeling good about these, feeling good about these. Potentially, maybe, potentially, possibly one thing that could go wrong. A little bit, maybe too big of a spread, whatever it is. We'll talk it all through. But here we go, our two 99% guarantees. We are going to go Bengals minus five and a half. Once again, we're losing value, folks. Now We had it at five, now it's five and a half. Dang, dang, dang. Y'all are betting correctly. That's why it's going down. So I appreciate y'all. Once again, y'all are listening live. Y'all are betting y'all understand it i appreciate y'all y'all know y'all know uh but here we go Bengals minus five and a half loving it loving it loving it here this Bengals offense it, that's really what it's going to come come down to this raiders offense is not going to be able to keep up pace with this Bengals offense i mean the raiders almost had trouble closing out the game last week against the chargers and they were at home in a must win spot to get to the playoffs and they almost beefed it down the stretch Fourth quarter, Chargers put up 15 points. Raiders really couldn't do anything in the fourth quarter. So, you know, if the four, if the Chargers played like the fourth quarter, like they did in the first quarter, I mean, I don't know if the Raiders win that game. And we know this Bengals team can come out guns a-blazing. They did it over the like the final two weeks here, final even three weeks, just absolutely getting it done and even still moved the ball decently without Joe Burrow last week. I think they still lost, but still kept it competitive, like lost by like five points over the Browns. Uh, but Joe Burrow can get it done. And T. Higgins, folks, I mean, T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, the Raiders are not going to be co be able to cover them. And then if they even want to establish the running game real early on, Joe Mixon, yes, sir, out of the backfield, running and catching, all that. It's just going to be too much for this Raiders team to overcome, in my opinion. We like Derek Carr. Don't get us wrong, but they don't have these explosive pieces that can consistently get it done. That's why the Raiders still had a skid at the back end of the season. Yes, they won their final game. That's all great yesterday in the playoffs that deserves an applaud uh the Raiders getting to the playoffs is a huge success and a huge accomplishment and uh, you just get clout for just making the playoffs so congratulations to the Raiders and Derek Carr people are respecting Derek Carr again which I absolutely love the man's got a big arm got to kind of clean up the clutch ability a little bit and then you know we're, we're talking about almost a perfect quarterback but this Bengals team with Joe Burrow uh, definitely deserves comeback player of the year. Absolutely. Letting it fly, letting it loose. Zach Taylor, letting him let it loose and all that. Going to Jamar Chase, going to T. Higgins, and then having that, you know, running game in your back pocket. Bengals defense has been really solid here. What are they kind of ranked defensively? Uh, just kind of, you know, we don't really, you know, follow season long stats, you know, that much. We do kind of, you know, stat by stat, game by game and all that. Just kind of get a feel and a sense and all that. But where do this Bengals defense just kind of and finally in terms of defense compared to everybody else so here we go just quickly Cincinnati Bengals defense what do we got it's kind of number 17 in points allowed they've allowed 376 points so far this season the average is 390 the Raiders have gave up 439 points so well uh well above the average right there not great for that Raiders team facing an offensively explosive Bengals team uh, this Bengals team, what do they look like in the passing and the running game? They have given up 4,200 passing yards. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the average is 3,800. So Derek Carr may be able to pass on this Bengals team. Running attack, do they shut down the run? They have allowed 1,700 rushing yards, and the average is 1,900. So Kenyon Drake and... Um Josh Jacobs may be a little bit wrapped up where Derek Carr maybe has a little bit more success. But once again, this Raiders team, how... 
consistent are they going to be able to be? Will they have a great passing attack first, second, third quarter, and then the fourth quarter drops off like we just saw? Maybe they don't even get three great performances out of the passing game. I'm going to swallow the five and a half here. It may be a little bit too much to swallow. This is why it's in the 99% guarantee because of kind of the spread. If it was minus three, that's fine. Minus four, minus five. Now we need kind of two possessions if they're scoring a field goal and all that. So the Raiders may have a backdoor cover. Maybe the Bengals are up 10. Raiders, you know, four minutes left. Really can't do anything. They score a touchdown. They only win by three, something like that. But I do believe the Bengals' offense, while we're watching this game, we're just going to be watching this game saying, yeah, yeah, this Bengals' offense, they're just leaps and bounds better than the Raiders. Um, So we're going to bet that and swallow the five and a half here. The Bengals go out and get it done, folks. All right, and then our second pick and our 99% guarantees, we are going to go Cowboys minus three here, folks. Cowboys minus three. Uh, You know, we still have a little bit of issues with this Cowboys offense overall, but the way that, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo plays, uh, you know, we still rely on him, and he still can clutch it up. He does make those, you know, boneheaded mistakes, like two, a one or two turnovers, bad throws that could potentially be turnovers, and this Cowboys defense will take advantage, folks. Walk of fame defense ball hawks all over the field here the defense for the Cowboys I think is going to be the main thing that we're focusing on while we're watching the game like with the Bengals we're like man oh man this Bengals offense is clearly better than the Raiders and can do whatever they want whenever they want we're going to be saying the same thing about this Cowboys team but the defensive side watching this Cowboys defense we're going to be like gosh dang Jimmy Garoppolo and this 49ers offense really cannot do really do anything And I think it's going to play a little bit of a factor. I don't think it's going to be a huge factor. But Jimmy Garoppolo, once again, still never kind of the guy. Like Brian Flores with Tua. Kyle Shanahan with Jimmy Garoppolo. Kyle Shanahan, you know, has been kind of wavering and going back and forth of his comments of the quarterback position really all season long. When Trey Lance got drafted, Kyle Shanahan was like, yes, uh, obviously, obviously Trey Lance is going to play this season. And then the first couple weeks came and it was like, like, yeah, I don't know when he's going to play. And then, you know, he went out there and didn't look the greatest, y'all. We broke it down. We hated what we saw from Trey Lance in his one start a couple of weeks ago. And then after that game, we get, you know, after the, after the final game of the season, Kyle Shanahan was like, oh, yeah, it was so easy. Of course. You know, uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was the guy. He was always the guy. It was never a tough decision to send Jimmy Garoppolo out there. Of course he's the guy. So Jimmy Garoppolo not having the stability there. We saw how that kind of happened with Brian Flores and Tua. They send Brian Flores out. I don't think they get rid of Kyle Shanahan, but I'm still saying, you know, the offensive side starts to kind of uh, – uh, what what word do I want to use? They want to start um, – Kind of, the offense gets a little kind of, you know, upset. And that's not the word I want to use, but that's the only word that it's coming to my mind. The word I want to use is not coming to the mind. But Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a little hurt, a little upset, a little bit left in the dust overall. Be like, hey, you know, hey, why are you so focused on Trey Lance when I'm so much better? I just I just won us the game. I brought it down in overtime, won the game, all that. I forced the overtime. What's good? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. What is good? Um, so Jimmy Garoppolo right here, he admits the uncertain future quote, always in the back of your mind in saying it has been in mind really this whole season. So Jimmy Garoppolo has known Kyle Shanahan, you know, all these comments going back and forth, Trey Lance, this Trey Lance, this yes, Trey Lance will play. No, he's not. Oh yes, he is. But then he doesn't look good. And of course, Jimmy Garoppolo is the starter. He, we've never not had this man, the starter. So I just think Jimmy Garoppolo at some point in this game. And once again, the fans, the fans were even clamoring for Trey Lance and benching Jimmy Garoppolo when they got down 17-0. So if goodness forbid the Cowboys defense really kicks off right from the get-go, forces maybe a turnover or two in the first quarter or two, everything really could just go downhill. Jimmy Garoppolo feels all the pressure. Kyle Shanahan is like, what the hell is this? The fans start booing Jimmy G and all that, and he doesn't have a miraculous comeback from behind performance like he did last week to win the game overall. So uh, I just want to read this one quote here by Jimmy G. So let's read the lead up just quickly here. Jimmy G helped San Francisco into the postseason, which means any week could be his final game in a Niners jersey, which means any week could be his final game. They kind of know. Jimmy Garoppolo kind of knows, hey, I'm not going to be here next year. They already drafted Trey Lance, but I think that's the wrong decision, the wrong move by the 49ers, but only time will tell. The QB admitted this week his uncertain future has been on his his mind all season, saying, quote, it's always in the back of my mind. It has been in mind really 
this whole season. I knew what type of season it was, knew everything that was going on behind the scenes and whatnot. So it was a little different, but at the same time, you've got to toe that line because you don't want to get too emotional in those moments. You've got to go play football when it comes down to it, but the human side definitely comes into play. But the human side definitely comes into play. Will that human side ever come out and show itself onto the field? It could potentially be this week with this Cowboys Walk of Fame defense exacerbating all the potential flaws in the 49ers offense in Jimmy Garoppolo's game. So I'm betting on the defense this week. Uh, The Cowboys minus the the three. We still like Dak Prescott. The offense is a little up and down when they have a great performance. It usually goes down the next week. So we're really just focusing and honing in on this Cowboys defense to get it done and to hold this 49ers team from scoring that much. We'll swallow the three here with the Cowboys. Cowboys minus three. So those are our two 99% guarantees. We got Bengals minus five and a half and the Cowboys minus three. Now, we've got one last game to decide here, and this one is a doozy. It's a tough one, and it's the Monday night game. Cardinals at the Rams. Cardinals plus four. Rams minus four. Cardinals plus the points, folks. You know, we talked about this a couple weeks ago on the show when we took the Cardinals plus six over the Cowboys because it was just so much value. We could not pass it up. We went through it. That was the most points of the season the Cardinals have ever gotten in any game, so we just could not pass that up. We took the Cardinals plus six over the Cowboys, and they win by three. So the points with the Cardinals is always going to be appetizing, especially when we're getting like more than three, more than kind of one possession field goal right here, and that's exactly what this line is right now. Cardinals plus four. Uh, but no DeAndre Hopkins this week. So ooh, can we rely? That means we have to rely on A.J. Green. And we have a little bit of problems relying on A.J. Green because he does not come through the clutch. He does not have consistent hands and all that. The game against the Packers, they lost that game because of A.J. Green single-handedly dropping the ball in the back of the end zone at basically the final 30 seconds of the game. Cardinals coming back and answering that touchdown touchdown that score that the uh, the Packers had and then really after that one loss everything went downhill they were 7-0 and heading into that Packers game they would have been 8-0 and after that game if A.J. Green came through in the biggest clutch game and got it done and they were at home for that game they weren't in cold Lambeau they weren't in cold Green Bay oh, oh A.J. Green oh my hands were cold I just couldn't hold on to it I'm sorry I'm sorry alright maybe we can give them a little bit of a break no you're in the dome you're in Arizona the cactuses are there okay and you still could not catch the game winning pass truly big time unfortunate so seven and one heading into that game and then for the remainder of the season they finished the season 11 and six they would have been eight and oh now they're 11 and six because of that it really all started to unravel after that game DeAndre Hopkins gets injured and just once again the offense overall is not the same they're losing games they're losing games against the Rams and uh the Colts Colts and uh, the 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 Seahawks just last week. What the hell is that? The the Cardinals could have won the division. This game probably could have been played in Arizona if they just won because the Rams lost last week. The Cardinals could have won the division, but they lost last week against the Seahawks, who have had offensive issues all year long. But they give up 38 points. You give up 38 points, so we like the Cardinals defense, but you just give up 38 points to the Seahawks team, and I don't think the Seahawks team has put up 38 points for the entire year let's quickly read some point totals by the Seahawks all year long starting at week one here we go 28 points 30 17 28 17 20 10 31 0 13 15 30 33 10 24 51 against the Lions and 38 just last week against the Cardinals so that was the second most points that they put up all season the first most was against the Lions you want to be compared to the Lions because I don't yeah Dan Campbell congratulations you won your final game but this Cardinals team they're a little bit past that stage of just hey can we win the final game? That's uh, that's like the success. That's a success bar for a year one Dan Campbell winning your final game. That's not where the Cardinals are. They're kind of like, hey, we need to get to like some championship games, okay? 
So the offense, a little bit of a question mark with no DeAndre Hopkins, and we know the chemistry with A.J. Green never being clutch. A.J. Green was, you know, part of the reason why maybe the Bengals didn't get it done during that kind of 20, uh, that kind of 2010 to 2016 stretch, if you want to call it that, with Andy Dalton and A.J. Green in Cincinnati always getting to the playoffs. A.J. Green never stepped up in the postseason, folks. This is A.J. Green postseason games here folks does this sound like stepping up here 47 yards on five catches 12 targets five catches 47 yards no touchdowns they lose that game second playoff game season 11 targets only five receptions 80 yards better no touchdown they lose the following year, nine targets, only three receptions for 34 yards, no touchdowns. Do you see this disastrous catch percentage here? 41%, 45%, 33 catch percentage. That's absolutely atrocious. In the biggest game, the playoffs, you can't get it done. <clears throat> then he's inactive for the other playoff game. And then his final playoff game in 2015, eight targets, five receptions, 71 yards, a touchdown, and they still lose by two. They're not going above and beyond. Solid work there, but not making the key difference. Still losing the game at the end of the day here. So we can't really rely on A.J. Green that much, folks. Um, and I want to watch, uh, um, I do have these queued up. Are we going to have time to fit this in? Man, oh man, we are going late today, late in this segment. Um, but I, I do have the all the throws queued up to A.J. Green from last week that we can watch. And once again, A.J. Green coming up big time small in this game. Final game win, and you would have won the division. They didn't know it at the time because the Rams played later in the day. Um, or were they playing at the same time? Regardless, the Cardinals needed to win this game regardless of the outcome. You saw the Steelers. They went out and won the game, even though they wouldn't have known till Sunday night if they got into the playoffs at all. But that didn't matter because you needed to take care of business first. And the Cardinals did not do that last week. And they haven't been doing that at all in the back end of the season. And it is so alarming and so jarring and so glaring that I don't know if even four points is good. Like we knew Immediately, six points with the Cardinals against the Cowboys was good. We don't know now. So just um, A.J. Green last week, nine targets, four catches, 23 yards, no touchdown. And a lot of his targets came on like the final drive of the game, trying to potentially get a touchdown. Uh, they have to settle for a field goal. Regardless, it's two possessions. But even that, even, you know, meaningless down two possessions, hey, at least let's get a touchdown so we feel good about ourselves. A.J. Green can't even do that, folks. Garbage time, a little bit of garbage time. Can't even get it done then, then. And then when we look at the Rams, folks, you just lost to the 49ers last week. Yikes, at home. The whole, you know, home field advantage does not work for the Rams. We heard Matthew Stafford saying earlier this week, yeah, you know, the fans, you know, not being on our side kind of messed with us a little bit. So Rams at home, that's not even a home field advantage. We get Matthew Stafford not being able to clutch it up here. Uh, we're going to watch the final drive here by the Rams. Um, can't get it done in overtime. 49ers score a field goal. They got to go down and try to answer. They can't do anything. They go seven plays, 13 yards in under a minute and can't move the ball. Throws an interception in game over. And then also you allow Jimmy Garoppolo to go down 83 yards in a minute to win the game. So we've got this dilemma, folks. Rams minus four. Is that good value? Cardinals plus four. Cardinals with points, man. That seems like appetizing, but can we rely on a Jay Green. So let's quickly let the film decide. We're going to watch all of the targets between AJ Green and Kyler Murray. Then we're going to watch the Jimmy Garoppolo game winning drive, the Jimmy Garoppolo overtime drive, and the Rams overtime drive. And we will go through it quickly, folks, okay? But we're going to watch those two uh, performances to see which one we we feel better on. Was the A.J. Green and Kyler Murray, was it just kind of, you know, good defense? Um, was it just kind of A.J. Green maybe just, you know, having it in his hands or dropping it? That would be alarming and that would not, uh, you know, make us bet the Cardinals. But maybe it was just like some batted balls at the line, tipped here, tipped there. Uh, you know, we'll watch to see why these balls were incomplete.
And then we'll watch the Rams. Is it jarring? Was the defense just giving up everything short and allowing the 49ers players to, you know, do the classic, you know, take the dink and dunk, take the underneath and go with it? Was Matthew Stafford just overthrowing in overtime, incomplete, not seeing the right reads and all that? So we'll watch the two sides and see which one is less alarming to us to see if we can take the four or have to swallow the four. We're going to make an official pick, folks, but we have to see what happened last week and see which one we can believe in more even though some jarring issues with the two so here we go let's start here with the AJ Green and Kyler Murray connection the Cardinals last week over the Seahawks once again nine targets what do we say three or four receptions we'll get the uh, uh, the numbers up here we had to refresh the page quickly all right, here we go. We might have to kind of log out and log back in. So stupid, man. This website still, still. Week 18, heading into the playoffs. The website is still absolute trash, folks. Uh, so let's uh, do the dance, sign out, sign back in quickly so we can watch the plays. So absolutely absurd. Takes two seconds, folks. But here we go. We're going to watch A.J. Green and Kyler Murray, folks. We need A.J. Green to step up. Yes, they have Christian Kirk, and Christian Kirk is still good, but he's not 6'4". A.J. Green is 6'4". DeAndre Howard Hopkins is 6'2", so, you know, he's your deep ball threat. Christian Kirk can still win the deep ball, but he's only 5'11". We need A.J. Green to be the big killer, to be the big mamu here for this game with DeAndre Hopkins being out. Can we have enough bad ability, buyability, believability in A.J. Green this week to get it done to take the four, folks? Four points in the playoffs. We told y'all the numbers, folks. The last three years, taking the points is usually the better option. Games are usually close in the wild card games but here we go we'll watch all the throws there are once again let's get to the stats here there are nine oh i went back one more oh man 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 all right let's go to the actual game here i went back uh to the cowboys game i don't know how i did that all right here we go week 18 cardinals <clears throat> cardinal seahawks here we go all right all right here we go it's the game folks i apologize all right here we go A.J. Green, last week against the Seahawks, officially had nine. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Uh, here we go. A.J. Green, nine targets, four catches. Good, not good. His fault, not his fault. Is it good? Does it give us a believability in betting the plus four? Here we go. We've got them all queued up here. Here we go. First, A.J. Green. Target is an incompletion. Incompletion on third and one. Yikes. First drive of the game, and you need this to extend the play. Extend the play. Let's see. Extend the drive, I should say. Here we go. A.J. Green on third and one. Tie 7-7 game. Cardinals at their own 34-yard line. Here we go. Third and two officially. Uh, going deep. A.J. Green and just can't catch the ball. Kyler Murray floats it beautifully, folks. Fo floats it beautifully. A.J. Green about a half a step in front of the receiver, which is open. But A.J. Green just cannot hold on to this ball. Let's watch it one more time here. Great. Look at this. Oh, yeah, that's open. Kyler Murray threw the ball a little bit too much inside, but still A.J. Green must catch that ball, must catch that ball. So overall, A.J. Green must catch it. Kyler Murray's connection didn't really put it on the money. So still, the connection overall, we're concerned after throw number one. Let's go to third throw number two. They don't throw to A.J. Green for the rest of the first quarter. Excuse me, they throw to him one more time. Sorry. Uh, here we go. First quarter, second drive. They throw to him, but it's a penalty. Uh, offensive pass interference here by A.J. Green, so it doesn't officially count, but I still want to watch it right here. Here we go. Third and eight. Trying to go to A.J. Green again at their own 11-yard line. A.J. Green, incomplete, juggling the ball, bobbling the ball. Um, on the sideline right here, and we get the push off. Here we go. Pushing off A.J. Green to get the separation. He caught the ball, but he pushed off. That's offensive pass interference, so it does not go. Inca it is complete, but the six-yard penalty for pass interference, and they don't pick up the first down. All righty. Then they don't throw to him for the entire second quarter, and they had throw to him once in the third quarter. Here we go. Third quarter, third drive. It reads, uh, third quarter, third drive. Here we go. Uh, 
4.52. Here we go. A.J. Green on third and one again. Third and one. Clutch downs. Extend the drive. They're up 24 to 17. You're in control. Finish out the game. Close out the game. Third and one. A.J. Green right through his hands. We got to take this one from the, from the back angle. Let me see if I can bring it up from the end zone angle because I think this one went right through his hands, diving through the ground. Can you look in the ball, please? Can you catch the mother-loving ball? Hopefully we get a great look from this angle. Here we go. Kyler Murray dropping back to pass. In there. I mean, just look at this, folks. Right. Right through his hands. Right. Ah. Uh. Just a little bit, maybe a little bit too out in front, but once again, going back to the connection and still A.J. Green not having that kind of fantastic catch attribute like we know DeAndre Hopkins does. Last year, the hell Murray, DeAndre Hopkins high-pointing the ball. That's what he does. That's what we need A.J. Green to do. You're 6'4". You must make these kind of tougher catches. That is you. You're not a Tier 1 wide receiver. We're not talking about, you know, a uh, uh, who's a Tier 2 wide receiver in this league. I mean, Terry McLaurin, not quite a... Uh, I don't know. Maybe he is a one tier one. But regardless, we're not talking about scrubs wide receivers. We're talking like a DeAndre Hopkins. A.J. Green in his prime was fantastic, folks. He was a DeAndre Hopkins. He was a Devontae Adams, okay? But now, with this Cardinals team, we've got nothing stepping up. He has not stepped up really once at all this season. And then, here we go. They go to A.J. Green on this drive, fourth quarter, second drive. They go to this man like one, two, three, four, five, six times. They go to this man six times when they need really a touchdown to make it a little bit more competitive. You're still down two possessions. But they go to this man like six times and get nothing good out of it, folks. So here we go. First and ten, the drive starter. Here we go. Let's bring this one back in the broadcast. All righty, here we go. Going to A.J. Green. Completion, incompletion, overthrow, no catch. Here we go. They're down 11 points, 27 to 20, or 27 to 38 here. Starting at their own 25-yard line, A.J. Green. This is just too simple. It's just an in route at the first down marker, and A.J. Green drops the ball. Still down 11 and, and incomplete, bringing up second down. Then we get the following play. They go to this man back-to-back -back plays. This one is a completion. Let's see what this one looks like. Here we go. Same thing, second and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Down 11, folks, with four and a half minutes in the fourth quarter. This is just a dink down, five-yard dink down. All right, nobody within five yards from him. He can catch the dink down. Congratulations, A.J. Green. All righty, then we get a couple of plays later on a second and one, pass incomplete. Once again, can't pick up the first down. Crucial, brutal drops here, incompletions. Second and one at midfield. Kyler Murray stepping up in the pocket, decides to throw it to A.J. Green last second, and incomplete right to him, and he cannot hold on to the ball. Incomplete. Here we go. Then they go to A.J. Green a couple of plays later. And why is this not, why is this play not up here now? Um they don't so do you do y'all see what I'm seeing about NFL Game Pass being absolutely trash? They leave off like the last six plays of this drive. So this is what we're getting from AJ Green, folks. Nothing great. The final play is thrown to AJ Green. We can't watch him, but we'll talk through him here. Um here we go. Pass for no gain. First and goal at the eight, pass for no gain. Second and goal from the eight, pass incomplete to A.J. Green. Then they go to Zach Ertz, they get a penalty. We get third and goal at the 18, they go back to Zach Ertz and it's incomplete. Setting up a fourth and 18, that's why they have to settle for the field goal. So A.J. Green in the red zone, A.J. Green in the end zone, can't get it done. A.J. Green for the rest of the game, can't get it done. I, I That's bad, folks, this is real bad. But is it worse than what... The 49ers and Matthew Stafford allowed to happen here at the end of the game. So let's quickly run through the touchdown drive to tie up the game. We'll go through it quickly. Here we go. Let's set it up. Rams up 24 to 17. That's up seven, folks, at home. Looking good. A minute and a half left. 49ers with no timeouts. What did they give up? What did this Rams defense do here to allow Jimmy Garoppolo to win this game? Here we go. First play. Uh, it's not. They're not dinking and dunking. They're kind of striking 15 yards down. On the field. This isn't that they let everything underneath go. That was a nice strike by Jimmy Garoppolo to find a little bit of a soft spot over the middle of the field, uh, a little bit deeper down the field. All righty, but now they keep going. Hurry up offense. Jimmy Garoppolo ch takes the check down underneath for only about six yards, maybe about five yards officially. 
Setting up second down. Here we go. Once again, hurry up offense. They've got no timeouts. Not working the boundaries. Working the middle of the field here. Rams defense is railing a little bit. Second and five. 50 seconds left. Here we go. Jimmy Garoppolo once again just fires the ball over the middle of the field to Debo Samuel. Jalen Ramsey plays it a little bit too um, too aggressive here. We see Jalen Ramsey just missing the tip here. You tip this ball, man, oh man. Jalen Ramsey, but that the athleticism right there. And if this is A.J. Green, if Debo Samuel's A.J. Green, this is going to be an incomplete pass right there. Luckily, number 19 for the 49ers. He takes it all the way to the 20-yard line. So a big old chunk play right there. Sets them up inside the red zone with now about 40 seconds left. You've got multiple opportunities to throw so they really just gave up one big play because Jalen Ramsey was a little bit too aggressive on the play kind of uh, stepped up a little bit too much when he should have been playing back a little bit once again thinking that they were just going to take the underneath dink and dunks and bring it all the way down the field and then here we go a little high throw once again to Debo Samuel by Jimmy Garoppolo. That goes incomplete. We get second and five. 31 seconds left at the Rams 14 yard line. Once again, they need the touchdown. Jimmy Garoppolo firing over the middle of the field and that's wide open. So the Rams defense just got a little bit obliterated. Uh, you know, over the middle of the field here. So hopefully they can clean that up. But that's still a little unforgivable. But now let's watch the uh let's watch the Rams final draw oh my god once again all these plays are not even on it they they leave out like the last six plays it's just so trash let me see if I can bring this up quickly here uh I just want to watch the final drive of this Rams team to see what the offense looked like what did Matthew Stafford look like on that final drive of the game when they needed at least a field goal to tie it up but he ends up throwing the interception and that is game over so here we go two minutes and 39 seconds left let's see if we can get over there quickly 239 we're at 237 beautiful right here all right here we go Matthew Stafford's final offensive performance here of the regular season down three in overtime and they only had two and a half minutes left shout out to the 49ers of eating up like eight minutes here in overtime on their field goal drive but here we go Matthew Stafford first throw uh escapes out of the pocket Dumps it down to his tight end, and it gets about nine yards. So well done by Matthew Stafford there to escape some pressure, work the pocket, and uh, find an open receiver. All righty, here we go. Next play, second and one here for the Rams. Here we go. Matthew Stafford, second and one at his own 34-yard line. Hands off the ball, gets a couple of yards, picks up the first down. All righty. They've got no more timeouts. Two-minute warning. Here we go. 24-27. Still down three. Matthew Stafford, come on. At his own 38-yard line. Got to do something here. He's going deep and just an overthrow trying to hit OBJ. And that is an interception to seal the game. So, unfortunate there. Matthew Stafford trying to air it out. Let's see. Uh, let's count the yards on this pass. Uh, this didn't seem like a 50-yard bomb. So, he's going to launch this one from the 30-yard line. And it's going to get all the way down to the 25 so we get about 45 yards that's underthrown. uh hopefully we know Matthew Stafford has a big arm I don't think it's declined that much this season where he can only throw 45 yards and I don't think that's the case so just a little bit of an underthrow there by Matthew Stafford if he puts this one right on the money let's see was there any great separation here by OBJ here we go. Rams launching it deep. There was some nice separation there. He just underthrows it. So if Matthew Stafford puts enough on it, that could be the game winner home run hitter. So now brings us back to the question. Cardinals plus four. Rams minus four. Which way are we leaning? Oh, my goodness. The Rams and A.J. Green, folks. I uh, Or the Cardinals and A.J. Green. Big, glaring, jarring. Not good. Not good. Where the Rams, they, their home field advantage may not be good. But at the end of the day, the Rams offense versus this really good, this Cardinals offense versus this really good Rams defense, folks, on the road. Ugh, I know the Cardinals may travel well, but maybe this is a wake-up call for Rams fans to get in the stadium and pack the stadium. And maybe they got to pump, pump some extra crowd noise in it to truly show the advantage. So... I just cannot rely on A.J. Green. He's never gotten it done in his career in the playoffs. Where Matthew Stafford, we don't know what he can do in the playoffs because we really haven't seen him in the playoffs. So, 
Rams minus four here. I think it's going to be our official pick. Um, as I said that, let's quickly see Matthew Stafford's uh, one playoff performance, I believe he has, um, and see what he did quarterbacking in that one game. I know it's a loss because they did not get ever win a playoff game, but I want to see his performance alone in his playoff game. Here we go. Matthew Stafford. He's gotten to three playoff games? Interesting. All right, year one, 2011, we got 65% completion percentage, 380 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Man, oh man, those two picks, a little, little, little. Um, and then we get 2014 against the Cowboys, 66% completion percentage, 323 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And then 2016 against the Seahawks, 56% completion percentage, 205 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. So I love the yard totals. I love the completion percentage. But those turnovers, folks, Matthew Stafford's definitely going to have to clean those up can this Cardinals defense get a couple of turnovers they were letting you know uh the you know they were letting the Seahawks throw all over them Russell Wilson 38 points no problem so we are officially taking Rams minus four in this matchup folks it's unfortunate with this Cardinals team started off so strong but no DeAndre Hopkins having to rely on AJ Green having to try to overcome this great Rams defense is going to be real gosh dang tough folks real gosh dang tough Rams minus four all right, so all of our official picks this week, folks, for every matchup, we are going Patriots plus four and a half, Eagles plus eight. We get Bengals minus five and a half, Eagles plus eight. I know I already said it, but I'm saying it again. Uh, we get Cowboys minus three, Chiefs minus 12 and a half, and Rams minus four. All righty, that may do it for us today. I know we still got to talk about MVP, folks, but I don't know if we're going to have enough time. Ten minutes is really not going to do it um, as we just spent uh, 50 minutes making our picks, okay? Um, so... All right, folks, we'll do MVP tomorrow. We'll do it on tomorrow's show. We'll, we're doing the show before the game, so we definitely have to get it done before any games truly kick off because we cannot let any postseason play, any postseason plays, performances, one play here, one play there. No, no, no. No playoff performances can influence or affect our decision of MVP. It is a regular season award, so we can't watch any playoffs that will kind of maybe subconsciously impact our decision. No, no, no. So we will do that tomorrow on the show. We have some, we have everything wide open for tomorrow's show. We've gotten everything really taken care of that we needed to throughout the week, and we are kind of good at this moment to you know watch the playoffs good. We've already made our official picks. We've watched all the film we needed to do. We just need to talk about MVP for really the remainder of the week, and that's where tomorrow comes into play. So tomorrow, folks, 100%, we will talk about MVP. Who deserves it? We'll break down these two Saturday games maybe a little bit more in depth look for some good prop bets all of that and we'll break down the nba and all that any stories that come our way we will also talk and discuss as well so that's going to do it for us today folks thanks for tuning in thanks for watching thanks for listening let's quickly see if there was any breaking news as we were live we got anything good here so far no good uh, Texans general manager Nick Casario on firing coach David Culley after one season saying, quote, one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life. All righty. Obviously not that hard if you still went through with it. Ma, ma. All righty, folks. That seems to do it for us today. Nothing seems to be breaking. So we're going to get out of here, folks, and we're looking to go back-to-back -to -back tonight in the NBA. We had some you know, good picks all around here, some solid value all around. So we are going to get out of here, folks, and we will see you tomorrow for our MVP discussion, folks.